Welcome to another episode of Comedy Wham Presents, The Past, with me, your host, Valerie, and brought to you by David Thomas. ComedyWham.com is your place to go for features about all Austin comedy. David and I have been talking about this podcast project for a while. I love interviewing funny people, and he loves writing about them. We'll be bringing you podcasts featuring the best in Austin comedy in all its shapes and formats. I'll be doing these interviews in two parts, the past and the current. Consider these bite-sized ways for you to get to know the folks that make the Austin comedy scene one of the best in the country. And now, the past with our guest, Martin Urbano. This is where you say hello. Oh, hi. Hey, how's it going? Good. I got no cue, so no cue. <laughs> I wasn't sure. Oh, that's true, because you don't have this, this <laughs> I don't have the introduction script in front of you to know. <laughs> Sorry, my bad. No, no. I was, all right. Thanks for having me. Sure. Thank you. Welcome. All right. Let's break the ice. Pick one word to describe your past. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, I listen. I listen to Michael's interview, and I remember like I should think of a word for this one. And I, I just, I just didn't. My past was it my past in comedy, or my past in in general, like in my life? Because in my life, it would be, <laughs> um. Oh, this is a lot of pressure, and you're not giving me anything. Help me, help me out. I, I don't know. I don't know. Give me some. Give me some hints. A phoenix. Oomph. Uh. <laughs> tortured. <laughs> no. Abused. <laughs> Let's just, uh, 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 comedy. That's my past. That's my yeah, entire past. past. That's all I remember. <laughs> all That's right. all I remember. My entire life. You, I started funny... listening to comedy when I was like 13, and I just never stopped. Yeah. That's all I listened to. I don't know anything about music. I don't know. I know a little about, about movies, mostly comedy movies. Yeah. Uh, I, don't, I don't really know anything other than comedy. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Where'd you grow up? Brownsville, Texas. Brownsville, Texas. Yeah. That's uh, a place where it's hard to find comedy. Uh, so yeah. I just stayed inside a lot. So no comedy scene? No comedy scene. Not any to speak of. I wonder if there's anything going on now, but I doubt it. You could go go and start that. Um, no, I'm good up here. Yeah. <laughs> I think so too. It took a so, while to get out of there. Yeah. Did you, there. you finished school? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, wait, what? In there, back in Brownsville? Yeah. But, yeah. I, I finished high school yeah. and then I, and then I moved to college, uh, at SFA, Stephen F. Austin State University. Where's that? Uh, it's in Nacogdoches, Texas. Yeah. None of those, know nobody knows any of those words except Texas. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah we it's from south to to like east-ish? far east okay. i think it, uh, people told me it was only like a couple hours away from louisiana i think okay. uh if that gives any perspective i'm really bad at geography i was gonna so say I got, if I got you no live clue. there you still don't I got know no clue. Exactly. i never went i never went I, you know i wasn't 21 couldn't go gamble or whatever oh, nobody else was yeah. wanting to do uh yeah i moved there because i followed a girl <gasps> and yeah uh, it was, a, it was a big Secrets mistake. Out. It was a big mistake. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody told me. And I was Don't like, nah, I'm in love. Oh, yeah. Um, but, but young yeah, love. I was wrong. Because I, I already knew I wanted to be a comedian. Yeah. You know? uh-huh. And this, when I tell people this part, everybody kind of is like, ah, oh, Jesus, the idiot. But uh, sorry, can I swear on this? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the guy who thinks idiot uh, is a swear. This is, this is not going on NPR <laughs> ever. <laughs> I don't say that, you know, I could die and then this would be, uh, this would be worth oh, gold. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway. Oh yeah. I got a, I got, I got into two schools. I got into SFA okay. on like mostly scholarship or whatever. And then I got into UT, the film program on full scholarship. Oh. And yeah, people are always very, <laughs> it's, you know, if I had to choose like a, quote unquote biggest regret yeah. that would i guess that would be it but i don't know if i went if i came to austin at that point when i was wasn't very good at comedy mm-hmm. uh i never would have uh been where i am now in the scene right. i i think i think i could be wrong you know maybe it would have been good but maybe i would have got wrapped up in school maybe i would have you know been too scared to go out i don't know i don't know i think it all ended up working out but what was your interest in the film school um, just cause I felt like that related most to like comedy and, you know, I would eventually like to, you know, I want to make movies and stuff. I think that would be cool. Yeah. So you said you knew 
already at that point that you wanted to be in comedy. Yeah. So I, I guess my question was, did you want to be behind the scenes or did you already know that even if you went to the film school? If I went to the film to be... school, my goal would have been to just use the resources to like make short films and like, mm-hmm. you know, make stuff, make do comedy. And to come to Austin, it was always my goal because I knew it was a good stand up town. Mm-hmm. And so I wanted to, so I would have been you know, doing stand up and then, yeah. you know, making things. I guess like, you know, I don't know if you know, like Ken Juliff and Andrew Dismukes and Andrew Clarkston, mm-hmm. they all, Allison, I think is a film major too. A lot of young comics now. So, you know what? Maybe I would have probably ended up being in classes with these people who I'm very good friends with yeah. now. Maybe, you know what? Now that I've convinced myself. I, I should, I regret it. I should have gotten, <laughs> this I should is have your gotten life, to UT. Martin. This is, I would have gotten a head start. I wasted so much time in Nacogdoche. I only wasted a semester. I dropped okay. out immediately well, because I knew I needed to do comedy. That's not too bad. Yeah. That's not too bad. You're only six months behind where you would have been. Uh, well, and then I, uh, the, the way I dropped out was by, uh, just not going to classes. <laughs> like nobody, Isn't that nobody, what everybody does though to drop out. Well, you can. I could have like withdrawn and like not gotten like four Fs or whatever, <laughs> <laughs> or th- a three Fs. I got an A in one class. The only class I still went up? to. Oh, okay. The okay. only class I went to because it was my uh, creative writing class, uh, and that was course. like the only good class. Yeah. The, the the class that made me quit school was my English two class. Uh, it's a class a lot. I feel like weird about that um course my english two course uh was just taught by a teacher who just like did not like uh teaching it was very obvious and it was just like a a a tough class for some reason and like i just couldn't i remember like the very first assignment was a plagiarism paper and it wasn't it was barely a paper it was like you had to answer 10 questions out of this you know booklet about plagiarism you have to like write whatever and i just couldn't do it i don't know why i couldn't i just couldn't it was the easy. It was step, you know, very yeah. first assignment, and I knew then and there. I was like, "Oh, school just isn't for me." That's yeah. You wanted to write on your terms because yeah. that's why you enjoyed the creative. That's why writing. I like creative writing because I could just write, you know, comedy. Yeah. Cool. Okay. And then after Nagadoches, you headed straight for Austin. Oh, oh, right. <laughs> so <laughs> by not showing up to class at all, you know, and the, you, I would talk to like my mom, but like. My parents were very, you know, strict about college and everything. Maybe I should get closer to the mic. Uh, they were very, you know, they wanted me to go. They, the only reason I went, my original plan, more the f- plan A was to just not go to college at all and go to Austin. Plan B was, you know, if I have to go to college, I might as well go with my girlfriend. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm not, you know. Uh, but... I, c- I couldn't tell them. You know, I couldn't tell them. I was just not going to class anymore. So I kind of just, you know, I'd been there for a month. So I kind of I knew what, a, you know, what lies to say. So I was just yeah. lying to my parents the whole time. And then they, you know, eventually found out because, you know, you can't keep the, well, they, I, I told them during Thanksgiving that I was dropping out and they were like, okay. okay, we'll at least finish off the semester. And then, you know, you'll have that GPA going and then you can withdraw or whatever. And I was like, okay. And, ooh. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, about that. Yeah, so I, I just didn't tell them, and I just went back, and I was just, like, dicking around all day and just kind of being a little frustrated because it's like, oh, I want to do stand-up, and I can't, yeah. you know, I'm just wasting my days here doing nothing. Um, and over Christmas, over that Christmas break, uh, everything was, like, in line for me. Like, I was going to move to Austin. I was going to sign a lease. You know, mm-hmm. I need well, I need my parents to co-sign. Uh-huh. Then they found out about the whole, you know, not showing not up to showing class up. and lying to them the whole time thing. And I got three Fs, uh, which ruined my GPA. And my, also my plan was like, if I ruin my GPA, I can't go back to college. There's no plan B. I'll yeah. burn that bridge right. and I only can do comedy. Um, they didn't like that. <laughs> so it's a solid plan though. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I think it's, it's tough to have a plan B in comedy because comedy is the absolute yeah. worst. Uh, I, I love it, but it's the absolute worst. I want to yeah. quit every day. You know, I feel like everybody wants, no, 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 yeah. that's a bit of a yeah. exaggeration, yeah. but you know, it's, 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 tough. it's tough. So if you have any sort of, if I could, I always tell people, if I could do anything else, I probably would. Cause it's, I can't do anything else. Mm-hmm. I would love to do anything else. Um, anyway, so they, they were like, we're not going to co-sign a lease for you. We can't really trust you right now. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, ah, oh, damn, that's, you know, and I, I got very upset, but looking back, uh, Totally reasonable. Yeah, of course. I lied to them for like a whole semester, you know, yeah. and I wasted their money just spending time there. I didn't tell anybody. But nobody – also nobody told me there were other options, you know, mm-hmm. withdrawing from class and all that. Or whatever. 
Um, and so my girlfriend at the time was like cool with my decision move because she knew I wanted to do comedy. Uh, and her brother lived in Denton, Texas. Okay. And which was, you know, an hour away from Dallas. And so I was like, oh, Dallas is a bigger city. I bet I can do comedy there. Denton might have, you know, a little bit of a scene there, mm -hmm. some open mics and stuff I can do. Uh, he was looking for a roommate. I could get it on the cheap, like 200, 300 bucks a month or something like that, just to stay in his living room on like an air mattress. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, I'll do that. I don't need a co-signer for this because I'm just, you know, going to pay him directly. Right. And I just told my parents, hey, I'm out of here. I'm going to Denton. They're like, all right, you do what you got to do. Went to Denton. There was a small comedy scene, maybe like 20 guys there tops, not all wow. consistent. Um, cause it's a college town. Okay. It's a college town. They got UNT there. Oh, that's, that's yeah. okay. I thought it was closer to Dallas than it actually is. Yeah, no, it's it's okay. a, it's like a good a good hour away. Yeah, and I I know that hour very well because when I the few times I I didn't end up going to Dallas a lot because Denton had mics, so I was able to do okay. some there. But in Dallas, I tried occasionally, and every single time I went there, maybe a handful of times, mm -hmm. uh, I would just go and do the open mic at the Dallas Comedy House. Uh, I'd go up like at the very end you know because i was a new guy they didn't know me so yeah. then they kept like bumping me they keep putting on their friends the crowd was dwindling it was all like comics from like the beginning it felt like you know and so by the end there's just like two people left in the audience and i'm just like hey and, you know i finally go up to the mic it must have been like three three hours two mm -hmm. three hours just sitting there i go up to the open mic house and i'm like hey man am i gonna go up anytime soon he's like we'll get you up right now and you know and then i went up and i would just eat it for two people, and then I have to drive back an hour by myself, uh, you know, without trying to and dicing turn the... your performance. And yeah, the exactly. Two audience. Yeah, that's all. What it was like yeah. to think about, you know, that's right, all I'm thinking right. about. So, well, I like to ask uh, if you can remember what was your first comedy set experience? Like, where did that happen in Denton? Mm, no, well, so Brownsville didn't have a comedy scene. But, you know, it's part of, it's part of the valley, mm -hmm. um, of, of Texas, which included a town, McAllen, Texas, okay. which is like an hour north of Brownsville. And that's where I would, uh, do my sets. I'd have to drive an hour. So I couldn't do it pretty, I couldn't do it consistently. I think it started when I was 17. So already in high school, you're starting. Yeah. 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 I wanted to start when I was 16, but like no venues would let a child in. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was, it was a little bit hard to get into things. Yeah. But you know, once I was 17, I was like, okay, I'm going to try. I'm going to go out. My first experience was actually supposed to be at the, um, at the River Center Comedy Club. I came up uh, San to San Antonio, or... oh, yeah, wow. yeah, yeah, over like Easter break. That's when I was 16, and I was like, you know, it was like a month till my birthday, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna get in yeah. my very first comedy set when I'm 16 years old. Mm -hmm. This would be good. Go up there. I get there. It's like a five in the afternoon mic, and there are like two other comics there or whatever, wow. and they were like, "There's no audience. You need to go bark people." And I'm like, "What?" And I'm with my dad, you know, and I'm just like, kind of... "I don't know what any of this means," you know, because I'm still new. I kind of yeah. knew what. Uh, knew what, but I didn't and any understand barking or whatever. Mm -hmm. Then they just couldn't get anybody and it was canceled. And I was like, oh wow, so this is comedy. <laughs> you know? Has that uh, happened since? Or did you That like stuff gets canceled? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that happens. Okay. You know, pretty constantly. Yeah. yeah. mics don't usually get canceled here in Austin because, you know, you got twenty comedians yeah. who are all yeah. you know at least gonna kind of watch and mm -hmm. hate it, but they're gonna kinda of watch. Uh Okay, so you're hanging out in Denton. You're you're heading out to Dallas. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So what gets you to Austin? Uh, well, uh, the Denton scene was very small, so it was easy to you know get to the top of it or whatever, mm -hmm. and just do. They they would have like a show there like once a month, and then you know I'd get on wow. it or once or twice a month, and I'd get on those, and I'd be at the mics and stuff, and I had my friends and everything, and it was it was pretty cool for a while, but it's very easy to you know, get diminishing returns when you go out to like the same people and mm -hmm. in the, in the same small town and you can't go up every single night, you know, they have a mic every single night. And I was also working, uh, shitty jobs. Like at, uh, my first job I ever got was in Denton and it was a, as an overnight stalker at Walmart, Ooh. which is the worst job of all time. I'm very convinced it was very awful. It, it made me feel so bad. I'd go in like it, eight or something and then i get or nine i don't you know what i can't even remember maybe it was 10 maybe it was 10 and then i'd get out at like at seven or something Ooh. like that and so then i'd just sleep all day and then you know the days i was working i couldn't do mics because right. i had to you know i had work uh it was very 
bad job. I last maybe, maybe a month there, maybe. And then I got a job at Pizza Hut, which was also, you know, not a great job. It's yeah. a job at Pizza It was all right, but I was just getting miserable there. And then uh, my girlfriend broke up with me. Uh, and so now I'm living in my ex's oh, brother's man. apartment, oh. uh, you know, in Denton, Texas. Oh, I got a awkward. job at Pizza Hut that I hate. And, you know, um, comedy just was feeling weird. And mm-hmm. summer was coming up and it's like. I'm, we're barely getting people at the mics or, or at mm-hmm. things because it's a college town. Uh, uh, yeah. So it's like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I like called my parents and I was like, I, I think I got to just like move back home for a bit. And mm-hmm. they're like, okay, yeah, come back for the summer. Huh. And then, you know, I go back and I'm just like, I'm trying to figure out, I'm trying to find my way to Austin, but I'm just sad, you know, a little depressed boy who got broken up with yeah, and can't yeah. do comedy. You know, I, I'm still trying to go out to McAllen during the summer, but it's hard. I'm very disheartened about everything. And my mm-hmm. parents were like, fine, we'll sign a lease for you in August, you miserable <laughs> sack of garbage. <laughs> Get out of here. sad enough, we'll <laughs> so, give you what yeah, you want. That's, that's all I needed to do. There you go. I didn't need to have a plan. No. I just needed to be sad enough moping around the it house that they wanted me out. It all started mm-hmm. when you just stopped going to those classes. Yeah. So you did have a plan. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was a weird <laughs> roundabout way yeah. to do it. But yeah. yeah. No, it was, I'm sure. So I, moved, I moved here. Yeah, I must have been. When I was 19. 19. And you're 20 now. 21 now. 21. Really? Yeah. Two years. Wow. Yeah, two That's and a phenomenal. half. Coming up on three. Maybe. So I like to ask about the type of things that you watched and, and listened to to kind of get you into the, yeah, I want to do comedy for myself. You mentioned that you, you watched a lot of comedy movies. And- yeah. Yeah, uh, my earliest influences, I guess you can say, it, were like, uh, like Seth Rogen. Okay. <laughs> like, it's Steve Carell and pe- those people, cause okay. I'm like, oh, I watch these movies and I'm like, oh, I want to be that. Yeah. And so I was in theater in high school. Okay. And I, for a bit, I wanted, I thought I was going to be an actor. I thought I wanted to be an actor. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then I was like, ah, but I only want to do comedy. And I want to, write all the stuff myself and i would prefer it in monologue form and (laughs) it's like oh wait this is stand-up comedy (laughs) yeah right uh it it was uh yeah around like 13 14 that's Uh when i kind of started discovering stand-up like uh bo burnham was one of my favorite my favorite comedian my first favorite comedian that is still one of my favorites now Hmm. you know because i also liked like uh, stephen lynch i don't know if you're familiar with stephen Mm -hmm. lynch he's a he's a musical comedian Okay. I used a guitar and, you know, I really liked him when I was in middle school, mm-hmm. but, uh, looking back in it now, like, ugh, this is really bad. Uh, but through him, I found other musical comedy like Flight of Concords and Bo Burnham, who became my influences. And then through them, I found, you know, more stand up and mm-hmm. regu- regular stand up. And yeah, I, uh, those are, did about you, what I can think of. Did you find Steve your, Martin. yeah, <laughs> who doesn't love Steve Martin? <laughs> <laughs> did you, uh, find yourself making a decision about the type of comedy that you do and maybe for you know the, the two people that don't haven't seen you live <laughs> uh i've heard you say this before you don't like to do um current event type oh comedy yeah just because you like your things to be evergreen and, and um so i'm just wondering did you did you reach your style fairly early on or is it something that you experimented and played with before you settled into what you, you do now? Well, I, th- I, th- I mean, I'm still definitely, yeah. definitely still working on it. Uh, I, th- I started out with like a little more just like, uh, puns and like wordplay kind of stuff, uh, kind of, uh, uh, clever more than it was like laugh out loud funny, mm-hmm. I think. Um, uh, and that, you know, but I was also, I also wanted to be, I think I wanted to be a little meta, do a little meta comedy from mm-hmm. like the beginning, just cause I watched so much comedy. Yeah. It's so, like I had a bit, and it ended up being like really hacky, you know, because it's hard to escape being a little hacky when you first start out, especially when you're 16, 17, yeah. you know, so when I was trying to write stuff. So I had a bit called Dick Jokes, and it was just like a bunch of uh, jokes where I compared my, my uh, dick to like just, <laughs> Other things, I don't, I, I don't, I can't even remember any of them. Also, I'm not trying real hard to, to remember any of them because it's embarrassing. Uh, 
But yeah, so it was like a little bit trying to be meta because I know like people, you know, people would make fun of Dick Joe. Like I would listen to podcasts and stuff like, you know, Marin's podcast and stuff. I'd be like, okay, I'm, you know, learning. I know Mm -hmm. Dick jokes are hacky. So I tried to do a twist on it and it ended up just being just as hacky as whatever else did. But, you know, I guess there were early inklings of that trying trying to be like that. But I, I, I don't know. Yeah, I guess now just I've listened to so much comedy that I just try to emulate my favorite stuff mm-hmm. uh so my favorite stuff is always like evergreen my favorite stuff is uh, like just one-liners for the most part mm-hmm. like meta a little bit but not too i don't like them when it's too much like only comics would get it i also want an audience so right. i try to make like a you know effort to make sure people of all races and ages and you know <laughs> uh religions yeah. Yeah. uh i don't yeah. know genders i don't know do you do you think that your I don't think your comedy is offensive at all. You don't usually do that type. <laughs> I mean, maybe I, I my my bar is very low for or high, whatever. I don't yeah. get offended very easily. Yeah. Well, I I don't think when people say like I'm, I'm like weird even then like I'm like oh, I don't think I'm that weird. Uh I don't think I'm that dirty, that dark. Yeah. <laughs> I, actually, I remember creative. I was saying that I don't, I don't think I'm that dirty, that dark. And then, uh, somebody told me, uh, <laughs> when you do the dirty show, oh. your jokes from your act are the jokes you use up top. And I'm like, oh yeah, I guess I am a little dirty. <laughs> uh, but what I, I, you know, try to pride myself on, like, I don't, I don't really swear. I don't get too graphic. Yeah. Uh, I try not to go for like the easy, you know, offensive jokes yeah. anymore. I, I did for a while, you know, that's, when I was in Denton, I was like, a, I discovered Anthony Jeselnik and tried to oh. emulate him a lot. And I think, you know, so I like, Please. my opener was like a rape joke and it, and it uh, went very well, you know, because it was a smart one. But, you know, yeah. still I said the word rape and I'm kind of like, I don't, I don't really say that word uh, anymore just because it has such a stigma. And it's like, if I could find, but if it's like, if I can find a more clever way to say that, yeah. then I'm cool with it. Yeah. You know, right. like if it's, uh, I don't know. Even just even just changing it to say assault, and then just kind of like I like implications of very awful offensive stuff. And you know, I'll say stuff like I'll say like I'll talk about like miscarriages. I'll talk about like uh, you know paraplegics, that kind of stuff. So I do talk about edgy. I change my mind. (laughs) I mean, this interview's over. I I kind of I would uh, I try to be you know provocative, but but like uh, you know, I'm not. Okay, I, 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 maybe I said that wrong. I don't try to be provocative, mm-hmm. but if it comes out like that, I don't shy away from it. I mm-hmm. think also, you know, I'm, what, a few years in, I, I, I don't know. Maybe mm-hmm. I'll have a complete 180. Maybe I'll be uh, the dirtiest comic alive. Maybe I'll be a clean Christian comic. I don't know. Either way, I'm going to end up, uh, you know, assaulting women. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, <laughs> that's a perfect place to stop, Martin. The police are right outside Tight. the door. <laughs> well, that's a wrap on Comedy Wham Presents The Past with our guest, Martin Urbano. Martin, do you want to tell us where to find you on social media? Uh, just follow me on Twitter. I need more followers, at Martin Urbano. Okay. Uh, if I can, you know, get enough followers, I'll be happy for once in my life. Okay. Low, low bar there. <laughs> Listen to part two for more information about what Martin is up to today. You've been listening to Comedy Wham Presents, The Past, hosted by me, Valerie, and brought to you by David Thomas. Be sure to visit ComedyWham.com and give us a follow on Twitter at Comedy Wham. I'm Valerie, and that's been, <laughs> that's been funny.